Good evening, everyone. Today we are reading from the Gospel of Luke, the story of Christ's encounter with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. We always read this on the third Sunday of Easter. So many different themes and deep spiritual ideas we could look at. I, however, want to sort of focus on one dimension of this, which is, I guess, one of my favorite gospel passages. And that's the fact that what really sort of sets everything into motion today is the death of Jesus, the tragedy of the cross. And here you have these disciples who are sort of mourning the death of Christ. They're Their hope in the resurrection has been shattered. They're struggling in their faith. And so they're doing two things that are sort of symbolic. The first is they are leaving Jerusalem for Luke. If you understand the theology of Luke, Jerusalem is the center. It is where God resides. It's the home, the symbol of the church. And so what's happening is they are walking away from Jerusalem away from God's presence, away from the holy mountain, and they're walking into the sunset. Because as they're going, evening is coming and the sun is going down, the darkness is coming. So they're going away from home and into the darkness as a result of this lack of hope because of the tragedy of the cross. And so this can be applied to our own lives. Whenever we encounter some type of struggle, some type of tragedy in our own lives, it could be a number of different things, or just about anything, a sickness, or we suffer with our health. One of the big things I see is a broken relationship, a love that falls apart. You could maybe fail a class or fail to graduate. Or possibly you could fly up to New York in order to pick up Cardinal Dolan, but 10 minutes before he's supposed to get on the plane, he gets sick, and so you have to fly back and cancel everything and hopefully reschedule. That could be something else that might make somebody end up questioning and feeling darkness. And so what happens is we encounter this tragedy, we encounter this struggle, And we cry out, wondering where God is. And we walk away from our safe home into the darkness. This could be allowing despair, the lack of hope, disappointment, or even acting out in sin to take over in our lives. It happens to all of us. But the second part of the gospel is the fact that once they have left and are journeying into the darkness... They encounter Christ, but they don't recognize him. They have this dialogue. Jesus walks along with them, but they do not see Jesus. They don't recognize him, even though he's right there walking and talking and explaining the scriptures to them. And so you could say, well, Father, I obviously know this means it's footprints in the sand. Whenever my life was rough, I was walking in the sand and wondering where Jesus was, and then, oh, look, there's another set of footprints. Yeah, 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 that's great. But there's something more important going on here. Indeed, Christ is with us, but quite often we don't see him. Why? Because we're so caught up in our own hopelessness, our own darkness, our own struggles, our own problems, that we don't see the Lord. But regardless, we feel abandoned. We feel the Lord is not with us. We feel that we are walking alone. The key is, that moves us beyond footprints in the sand, is the fact that we see that in the gospel, Jesus knows where he's going. Or at least knows where he is leading or hoping to lead these disciples. Even though he says he's going a different way, what's the real terminus? What's the real end? Jesus wants to celebrate the mass with these disciples. Whenever you see in scripture the breaking of the bread, this is the early Christian term for the Eucharist. And so when Christ celebrates that Eucharist on Easter more, on Easter day, what happens? Or Easter evening? They recognize him in the breaking of the bread. 
they recognize Jesus. Their eyes are open. They see Christ is with them in and through the Eucharist. But then he disappears. And so what do they do? They go back to Jerusalem in order then to talk to the apostles and the believers and the Christians there. But here's the key. Jesus, even though he does not, he disappears, he doesn't abandon the disciples. Why? Because he remains in the Eucharist. He remains in his true presence in the Eucharist and in the Mass. He hasn't left them. He hasn't abandoned them. He's there. He's present to them. They're not alone. And so in that encounter with the Eucharist, what happens is that the scripture says they begin to look back at the events of the day and say, wow, look how the Lord was speaking to us. Look how our hearts were burning. Because of that encounter with Christ in the Eucharist, they're able to see things in a different light to see how Christ was with them. And from there they go back to Jerusalem, back to the church, back to that community in order to share and to find support there. That is the paradigm for our own lives. Whenever that tragedy strikes and we leave, we walk into the darkness and we feel alone, the message of the gospel is, Jesus hasn't abandoned us. Yeah, yeah, he's walking next to us. But the reality is he's there in the Eucharist, but we often don't see it, or we go in some other direction instead of heading to the tabernacle, to the church, to meet Jesus. In Lafayette, we have 16 Catholic churches. It's not like you live in the country in the middle of Utah or something, where the nearest Catholic church is an hour away. We have plenty of opportunity to encounter Christ in the Eucharist, to go to Him, to know that we're not alone, but so often we do not avail ourselves of that opportunity. We stay in the darkness, we wander, we turn in on ourselves. But Jesus is always there. That's the message of the gospel. Even though He disappears, even though now He's ascended to heaven, Christ is still with us. He hasn't abandoned us. And so when we encounter Jesus in the Eucharist, it may not be instantaneous, but as the Lord begins to minister to us, as we spend time with him, we're going to be able to see, wait a second, I really wasn't abandoned. Things that seem dark, tragedies take on a new light, and then we're able to go back to Jerusalem, to our friends and our family, the church, the people who support us, and to find answers and love there, to find the Lord ministering to us in Jerusalem. But we've got to start with the Eucharist. We can't just keep walking into the darkness. We can't wander. We can't turn on ourselves. We must go to the Lord. The story sort of rings true for me because about 20 years ago, when I was 20 years old, the age of many of you, I was living out of state working for the summer. And just before I left for the summer, I started dating a girl. And we were very much in lust with each other. Let's put it that way. We weren't in love, but we were passionate about our relationship. And so having to go away for the summer, I was lamenting this. And we were talking on the payphone. There used to be this thing called a payphone. (laughs) And you had to have some coins, and you had to put it into it to talk. If you ran out of coins, you couldn't talk particularly if it was long distance, unless, of course, you call collect. But then again, people didn't much care to take the collect call. But anyhow, all of a sudden, she quit talking to me. I wonder what's going on. So I found out through a friend that she had cheated on me. My life was crushed. The relationship had fallen apart. It was the end of the world. I couldn't believe this had happened. We were committed to being with each other. And so what did I do? Instead of walking into the darkness, I, at the time, I didn't see the Lord working. I went to the church in the middle of town. It was about 11 o'clock at night. I remember nobody else was there, but the church was open. And I sat there and I could see the tabernacle light, praying in front of the Eucharist, wondering why my life had fallen apart. This relationship had come to an end. And I didn't hear a voice. I didn't see some dove like the Holy Spirit descend on my head, but I knew the Lord was there. And I had this great sense that it was going to be okay. 
After that, I went to talk to the priests. I guess that's like going back to Jerusalem. And things began to make sense. That should be our first response. Our first response. To go to the Eucharist whenever the tragedy strikes, when things fall apart, when we feel the darkness coming in. And so, that is what I want us to remember. Because some of you may be going through that dark period right now, a broken relationship. A lot of you probably are in a dark period because of exams start tomorrow. Maybe you didn't study, you've been goofing around. I don't know. Regardless, there's hope. We can't give up hope. We can't let the disappointment and the tragedy take over. Spend some time with Jesus in the Eucharist. Bring in those problems. Bring in that darkness. Allow him to reveal himself to you so that we can then see how the Lord really has never abandoned us. That whatever we're going through can indeed fit with part of the Lord's plan for our lives and come back to Jerusalem, come back to the church, come back to those who support us so that we might find hope in Christ in the Eucharist and Christ in the church. Amen.